If you're writing code that does everything, then you are doing it wrong. The single responsibility principle isn't just about clean code. It's about survival in a world of ever-changing software. Why do so many developers misunderstand this rule? And how does it secretly kill projects? Let's find out. Here's the problem. Most developers think the single responsibility principle means keep code small. But it's way more than that. What if you thought you were following it, but you weren't actually following it? This is what I see a lot of developers get stuck on. They break up classes and they arbitrarily divide things, which is crazy. That's not how the world works. So the single responsibility principle isn't about chopping up classes and making them small. It's about making them cohesive, making them do a single purpose, no more and no less. That is a skill, actually to be able to see what that level of abstraction is and what that small purpose is. Okay, let's break down some concepts in the single responsibility principle. What is a single responsibility? Well, in simple terms, SRP states that a class should have only one responsibility, not many. Now, this is much in contrast to what I hear some developers say to me. They, and, and actually where I was a, a long time ago, but I can still remember very clearly, I said, I want to have everything in front of me, right? I want to have it all there so I can see it and I can work with it and change it as needed. But the problem is when I put all of my process, every step, everything that I need to do in one place, in one method, then I've also coupled all of those steps together. And when I have to make any change to any one of those steps, I have to muck about in this one place where all of them are together, which could very likely cause side effects. And because of that, it's dangerous. One of the most important things in object-oriented programming is encapsulation. And that's what putting things in separate methods and in separate classes give us. It gives us encapsulation. It gives us a guarantee that one process, one piece of code won't step on another piece of code if we follow the rules. <laughs> if we don't, then we're in trouble. But that's like life, right? <laughs> we gotta follow the rules. And the same thing is true in coding. The way all of this all happens is the compiler enforces the rules of encapsulation. And so we have to really understand them to leverage our code. We don't wanna use global variables. Sometimes we have to in the form of singletons but we want to be aware of them and we want to be aware of the dangers of that. And as much as possible, we want to make each little piece of code that we write functionally independent. And this is a, another perspective on code that I think is super valuable is that the functions that we write, the methods, the classes, not only perform in the context of the program that we're building, but also have to perform, have to perform independently independently so we can verify each piece. And actually we, we prove that by writing little unit tests for little units of behavior. And, and when we do this, what we're doing is we're breaking up the big monolith and we're making little bits of functionality that can change independently. And that's really valuable. This is the reflection of the single responsibility principle because we're making our code have a single responsibility. Now, if we look at it, <laughs> it's responsibilities all the way down. Because what we do is we, we have different levels of abstraction that we understand our code in. So there's a high level, which hopefully is the domain model, which expresses the, the pure business rules. And then there are layers below that that aggregate different pieces of functionality in our system to implement that domain model. So, I mean, in an ideal world, what we would like is to have a pure domain model that, that specifies the rules, the business rules of our system. And then we would have a bunch of services that we could then instantiate and use to be able to implement those business rules. And when we do this, we can do it in a very decoupled way so it is much more scalable. It's a, kind of a different way of thinking about software development than building a big monolith. But it works out to be highly efficient when you have the skills to be able to do this. And they're not really hard skills. They're really just a handful of them. <laughs> if you think about it, as I have many for many years, and um, it all stems from this one principle that we're talking about here, which is the single responsibility principle. And you know, I shared this way of 
development with many, many developers, thousands. And for many of them, this is their way in. The way to be able to see how all of the good stuff of software development, like design patterns and all the other principles, sort of fit together. Because when we start breaking the monolith up and, and creating entities that do have just single responsibilities and then aggregating them as another responsibility and doing this in, in thoughtful ways, ways that reflect the problem that we're modeling, what happens is we get clarity because we can actually see it in the code. It doesn't, it's no longer obscured. And that is so valuable because it means that people can understand what's going on. That's what we're trying to do when we're building software is make code understandable. So it's not just about creating the business process and making the code do something, but doing it in an understandable way. Okay. And, and really, I think in so many ways, the single responsibility principle is at the root of that. Because if our entities have single, single responsibilities, the right responsibilities, then we can look at those classes, we can look at those methods give them meaningful names, and make our systems understandable. That's important. So what is the single responsibility principle? In simple terms, the single responsibility principle states that an entity, be it a class or a method, a function or a module, should have only one responsibility. So what is a responsibility? A responsibility is one focus, one thing that you can name, that you can identify as one thing. And usually we can do that with looking at the name of something. Because if the name has an and in it or an underbar, or it represents multiplicity, then obviously it's not about one thing. And there are times that the, there are like aggregators, right? That's, you know, an entity that aggregates or manages a bunch of uh, maybe users or, or logins or whatever. So it's, but it's still about one thing, even though it's, we ha it's managing multiple users, it's the manager of users, right? So we think about things at different levels of abstraction when we think about one thing, one responsibility. That's why I say it's responsibility is all the way down. When we build systems this way, it helps us organize because this is the nature of information. Information is data organized. And that's what we're doing is we're organizing information. And we're organizing our processes around what we're doing. That's what the single responsibility principle says to me. Imagine you're at a restaurant and the chef is also the waiter and the host and the dishwasher. It's pretty inefficient. And that's what code looks like without the single responsibility principle. The single responsibility principle is part of the solid principles that was called out in, you know, Uncle Bob Martin's book, Agile Software Development. Not my favorite book for Agile Software Development, but a uh, very interesting and I think he and Michael Feathers and some of the other ThoughtWorks people apparently came up with that acronym, which I think is quite clever. Uh, it's a five letter acronym that represents the five key principles in software development. The first two I think are the most important. The S stands for what we're talking about here, which is the single responsibility principle. The O stands for the open and close principle. And that is also a vital principle. I have a video on that right here. And I it would encourage you to look at that too, because the S and the O are the most important of the solid principles. The L stands for the Liskov substitution principle, underscoring the importance of abstractions and creating shallow inheritance hierarchies. The interface segregation principle is the I. And that is to create interfaces, method signatures, or, or ways of calling our behaviors that are in alignment with the caller itself. And, and that really is this, the last principle as well, the, the dependency inversion principle. Think, think of it from your caller's perspective. Now I know that other people have different interpretations of these principles. So why does software development get the single responsibility principle wrong? Many developers think of the single responsibility principle as splitting classes into tiny bits, like micro classes. But that isn't at all what the single responsibility principle says. It's not about size. It's about focus. A class that has hundreds of lines of code, but still one focus, may still follow the single responsibility principle. Again, it's not about size, but it's about the single responsibility. 
doing one thing well. Let's look at a real world scenario where the single responsibility is misunderstood. Perhaps developers create three classes that all touch a user login, data validation, and error logging. These are three distinct jobs that is mashed up into one thing. When they're mashed up in one thing, we can't test them independently. We can't use them independently. So maybe we want to use the validation or the error logging somewhere else, but we can't because they're all part of a single thing. And from the outside world, there is no difference between all those three things. They're all one thing. And because of that, it makes it very, very difficult to reason about and work through. So why does the single responsibility principle really matter in the real world? Because it impacts code's maintainability, its scalability, and the flexibility to be able to make changes to the code. This is critical for business, right? These are the limiting factors very often in businesses' ability to respond to change and be able to take advantage of new processes. The limiting factor in all industry is almost always software, unless there's hardware, to, hardware involved, and then it's software and hardware. <laughs> and then it's also the communication between the software and hardware. Um, but for most business processes in IT, it really is software that is the thing that is the limiting factor. So when we can make software that's flexible, that can respond to business needs, it directly impacts the business's bottom line and that makes the bosses happy. Using the single responsibility principle leads to fewer bugs. It leads to more maintainable and more understandable code. Code written with the single responsibility principle leads to more correct coupling and makes future changes far easier and more straightforward for developers. Let's take a simple example. Imagine you're building a system that handles customer orders. At first glance, you might want one class to handle order placement, email notifications, and payment processing. But if one of these functionalities change, you'll have to rewrite the whole class. That's a ticking time bomb. So what do we do? We break down the example. Split the classes into smaller focused classes, an order service class, a notification service class, and a payment processor. In a year, when the payment gateway changes, you'll only need to modify the payment processor, leaving everything else intact. Scale that up to dozens or hundreds of times, and you have some very significant differences in workflow. Let's talk about the benefits of the single responsibility principle in software development. And here's why Agile and the single responsibility principle are best friends. In Agile, we're constantly adapting and creating iterations that build on our previous work. The single responsibility principle allows for quick and safe changes without the fear of causing a domino effect across a system. This is critically important when we're building software iteratively. So the single responsibility principle merges perfectly with the notion of iterative development. Because when every one of our entities follows the single responsibility principle and we name our entities well, we can trust them. We can create them and then move on and use them knowing that they do what they're supposed to do. Having this level of trust for each of our components, and for a lot of developers, I think this is a new concept, but it really does transform the way we think about our code and how we build our code. We can do this if we allow our compilers to enforce encapsulation. We can trust our systems. We can build software in a deterministic way. And that's what we want to do. The single responsibility principle also means that we can build good unit tests for the responsibility that we're creating. It keeps the focus on the outcome that we want to create rather than our process or rather than how we implement those outcomes. And this again is really important for building well encapsulated systems. The single responsibility principle has us focus on building code that is clean, that has good code quality, that is understandable. And these are the things that lead us to understanding and coming up with good designs. When we build messes and we create code that 
is not expressive, when we use poor names and chop things up arbitrarily, it's very hard to understand what's going on. I mean, the computer can execute it, maybe, if it does the right thing, but it's not understandable to people. And as a result, it's very hard to work with. It becomes incredibly expensive. I've seen code that is, you wouldn't call it worth millions of dollars, costs millions of dollars. It costs millions to make, and then it costs more to, to much more to actually modify because it's so dense and hard to work with. We don't want to leave messes. It's not part of our job. And the single responsibility principle really teaches us how to build code that is not messy, that is good. Oh, and by the way, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. That will send the vibes to the YouTube algorithm and it will be able to share this video with many other people. So please hit the like button. Okay, so here's the kicker. When you start implementing the single responsibility principle properly, everything else falls into place. Your code becomes easier to maintain, easier to scale, and easier to understand. It's more straightforward to adopt changing requirements. And that is so valuable. And the best part? You'll stop fearing change because the single responsibility principle, when you do it well and you do it throughout your code base, gives you the ability to future-proof your code. And that is a huge statement, but it is true. When you build software well, you find that it's really hard to come up with requirements that break your code. Yes, you have to modify it, but it doesn't completely destroy your design. And that's very, very important because there's a huge investment in design. And we will also want to be able to learn how to modify designs. And when we build with the single responsibility principle, it, it reveals all of that. It kind of reveals the truth hidden in the mess of our code. So think about using the single responsibility principle. My guiding light for the single responsibility principle is names. Can I create a meaningful name for this behavior? Can I create a name that really nails what this behavior does? If so, then I know that it's at the right level of abstraction and it has the right responsibility. Now I might need to then break it down further from there because there might be levels of abstraction lower than I need to go. But at least I've identified one abstraction. This makes it really easy for me to create an acceptance test for that, for that behavior. And then I know I'm on the right track. Okay. So the single responsibility principle, it is not just a theory. And it's often the difference between a successful project and a nightmare. I think of it as one of the two most important principles. But what if you're already deep into a code base and you find that it has not been using the single responsibility principle? Don't worry, because next time I'll show you exactly how to refactor code to bring you back to the single responsibility principle. The single responsibility principle is one of two very important principles. The other one is the O in solid, which stands for the open close principle, which in many ways for me is the guiding light in software development. If you want to learn more about that, then check out this video. It's awesome. And until next time, happy coding.